Coming up on this episode, I review the Doom mod Deathless on Android under the auspices of also reviewing the Razor Kishi. A. V. N. It's headphones nailed! guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Deal Reviews and this is going to be more of a follow-up review to the review that I did a few weeks ago maybe about a month and a half on the Razer Kishi so I had some time to play with it more as far as a mobile game goes to get used to the controls and the buttons the layout the scheme and all of that sort of stuff so I can now do a better review of it um, and I since I was also able to play a popular Doom mod I thought I would also review that at the same time. So as I mentioned in the intro the game that I tested the Kishi with on a more uh, longer basis what is the Doom mod Deathless. So I did use Doom 1 as the base on Android and um, the mod is available via the add-ons list in the game so Installation was a breeze, it went by really easily, it's easy to enable it and or toggle it to get it playing. Um, and I did end up playing all four chapters, um, all four 32 levels, and I was able to play it very easily. So the main difference between this playthrough versus the original playthrough of Doom that I did back in November of 2020 is that in this case I was using the Razer Kishi instead of the on-screen controls and I want to say that the Kishi definitely has a marked improvement over using the on-screen controls to play the game so whether I was playing for 20 minutes or an hour the controller feels really really comfortable in my hands I may have mentioned it in my original review but um, the controls feel a lot like the old Sega Game Gear in my hands and I found that to be very um, easy to use as well. The main difference here is that you do have the joystick controls on the device so you, and um, more trigger options so it does and it, or does allow for better um, playback controls as far as um, switching weapons, um, menu system. Um, shooting and aiming, uh, strafing, running, and all of those various options. So I do want to provide a more better recommendation that the Kishi is a good controller to buy. There are others out there, but for the price, it is definitely worth it. It's very easy to use as far as plugging it into my OnePlus 9 Pro. Um, the heating issue that I originally had when I was playing for example Red Dead Redemption didn't really seem to be an issue for a gameplay that was around 45 minutes or less. Once you get closer to an hour it does feel like it is getting that much hotter but because you are playing the game for that long and the battery drain is longer or um, higher that is potentially also the cause and if you leave for example your Wi-Fi and mobile data on um, there could also potentially be other factors like background syncing, podcast downloading, backup and various other things that can cause additional heat so for example if you play in airplane mode I would imagine based on my current playthrough or current usage of the Kishi that the heat shouldn't be an issue. Um, since I finished playing the game I was able to play um, Red Dead Redemption 2 via Google Stadia for about an hour and a half and I actually found that I didn't have that same heating issue so in addition to the stuff I just mentioned it is possible that a recent update to my device maybe about three or four weeks ago also solved some of those heating issues so um, it's one of those things that if you're finding a lot of heating issues it can be on device or just a pending update. Um, even if you try rebooting your device or entering airplane mode, that can solve that issue. So overall, the Kishi, as far as performance goes, is a good um, device. And as a further test string of the battery drain on my 9 Pro, I found that it's about what I expect, expected and suspected, that battery drain isn't more than maybe a 
couple of percent extra um, versus not using the controller. So playing the game for about half an hour, for, so starting at 100%, would go down to maybe about 70% or so. Um, playing for an hour, is it, it probably went down to about 50%. So I've, I think in general, playing any other game, even higher resource games like Knights of the Old Republic, was about the same so you know i could play for that hour an hour and a half and the battery would only go down maybe at most 40 to 50 percent the 50 percent side is more on this extreme but i want to say 40 percent is about on par for um what i would get as far as battery usage without the controller so and i you know maybe without the controller it's like 37 percent or something like that so it's not anything extra um, crazy or anything like that. So that's about it for the Kishi review. As far as the Doom mod Deathless, um, I was trying to read a good summary of kind of what the story is with the game, with the mod, and it, as far as I can tell, it's basically a level replacement for the original Doom. So rather than the original levels that you see, um, the mod is supposed to um, replace the levels and give a new experience to a very similar story. So the Doom guy, or there's a um, attack on Earth. The Doom guy um, is called is the last Marine and is called on to um, uh, save the Moon Base. On I forget if now I forget if it was um, uh, Phobos or Deos. I want to say I forget. That. Demos maybe, um, and then ultimately he has to go down to hell and then escape hell. So, in general, it felt like a a good like sequel to Doom and a prequel to Doom Two. So, um, in general, I would recommend um, trying the mod if you've ever if you've ever played the first Doom or if you do pl end up playing um, Doom One and you want to try alternate levels and additional maps and things like that, then it is definitely a, um, a mod to try. There is a sequel mod called Earthless, which is supposed to take place after um, Doom 2, that is currently in the works. It's currently uh, There's currently 12 uh, levels in the form of Earthless Prelude that's supposed to be um, about the demon stealing Earth. So. Um, a definite sequel versus a remake of Doom 2. Um, I don't want to. I want to say that it's kind of it's an un a sanctioned, unofficial port, so it's not really anything in actual continuity of Doom. But it sounds like an interesting um, wad to try. Um, so once the final um, add-on is available, I might give that a shot. But as far as Deathless goes, it's a good four chapter um, update add-on. Um, mod of Doom 2 that actually goes by really fast so if you found the original Doom to be too difficult or you didn't particularly like the story or you didn't find it particularly hellish or scary then I would recommend giving Deathless a try because it does lean a little bit more heavily on the demon, the demons, the scariness, the horror, the surprise element and all of that and it's not as, I didn't find it as hard as the original Doom Granted, now that I've played through it, I'm um, that might be the bigger factor there. But for me, um, the original Doom, I found that there were a lot of levels that I would have trouble getting through. That have seemed kind of not necessarily confusing, but um, I would have to work a little bit harder through versus um, Earth or versus the Deathless mod, where it was only a select levels later in the game. So I, I want to say notably in chapters three and four. Maybe even chapters two and three is, you know, less than a handful of levels that were particularly difficult. So, um, and part of it also might be learning curve that going through the original Doom back in November of 2020 was the first time I was going through the bulk of the game. But now that I'm familiar with the elements and the demons and the enemies and all of that, that it is that much easier and I'm more familiar with the game to make it easier to get through. Um, but I would recommend it. In general, I did find Deathless to be easier than Doom, uh, or easier than uh, vanilla Doom, so definitely a good mod to try, um, and good levels and all of that, so it's 
um, notably easier to get through. So even if you want to give that a shot um, before you try the actual Doom, that might be the way to go to at least get yourself familiar with the weapons and the demons, make it easy to find the various um, weapons that you can get, like the shotgun, the railgun, uh, the plasma gun, and the BFG. And then also um, fight against the various demons like the um, military people and the demons, the um, spider mastermind, hive mind, I forget what it's called, um, the barons of hell, the cyber demon, and um, all those various monsters. So by the time you get to the actual doom, it is that much easier to figure out a way to defeat them. So um, as far as recommendations, I would give the Kishi about an A-. Um, overall, like I said, it feels good in the hand. Battery drain is minimal. It's easy to use. Um, and regardless of how much time I use, I played games with it, it uh, was responsive the whole way through. So um, the only thing that I haven't tested too much was playing with the power cord to, um, plugged in. But in general, it's a very responsive um, gamepad, very um, easy to use to plug in and get started and all of that. So um, a definite recommendation for that. As far as the Deathless mod for Doom, I would give that a solid A. It's very well done. I think from being online, it was something that was completed in less than a month, maybe like a couple of weeks even. And it was basically just a fun mod to whether it's a sequel to Doom and a prequel to Doom 2 or an actual level replacement for Doom 1, it was just a fun um, set of levels to play through. It went by really quickly. Um, I like the progressive difficultiness of the level, so it starts off easier and then they go on to become more complex. So, And then I like the more evilness of it, so I, could, I did find it to be more ominous than the original Doom, so I definitely recommend giving it a play. Um, regardless of if you've played Doom and Doom 1 before, um, this is a good mod to check out. And I'm kind of hoping that by the time I finish my playthrough of Red Dead Redemption 2, that the Earthless mod for Doom 2 is complete and I can give that a shot as well to see how that um, turns out. Um, there are other mods that, I've, that I was seeing that are well known like the, I think the TIR experiment or something like that and the Plutonia experiment which I know I, I've heard of the Plutonia experiment as being a part of Final Doom so um, I might even give that a shot to see um, to give that a playthrough just because that is something that I'm familiar or peripherally familiar with um, in the Doom universe before I even ultimately move on over to uh, Doom 64 and Doom 3. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. Um, and of course, as I'm as I alluded to in the review, um, the next game that I'm currently playing is uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 via Google Stadia, so look out for those videos on the YouTube channel. Um, but this post will have the playlist for the Doom 2 Deathless mod, which is on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash patelin01. So um, be sure to give the channel a subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified as I upload videos to the channel as well. But thanks for tuning into this particular review. And